around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> A great big difference gets relief with every single drop. Yes, there is a big difference in Vicks medicated cough drops. The medication makes the difference. Only Vicks cough drops are medicated with the exclusive throat-soothing ingredients of Vicks Vapor Rub. Two delicious flavors, Vicks Regular and New Wild Cherry. Next time your throat feels raw and irritated from coughs due to colds, remember... There is a difference. A great big difference in Vicks medicated cough drops. And for a stuffy nose, just one whiff. With a Vicks inhaler and that miserable feeling of a stuffy nose goes in seconds. Use it anywhere, anytime. Vicks inhaler. Mr. Dillon? What? Mr. Dillon. What are you so riled up about, Chester? <laughs> Press Graydon and Howard Ryan. Uh, what are those bullies up to now? Well, see, you won't never believe it, but there's a real Chinaman here in town. What? A little Chinese fellow with a pigtail and all. He just come in to dodge on a freighter's wagon, and right now, Braden and Rab, they got him pushed up against the wall out there. Well, what are they doing to him? Well, they're deviling him and poking fun at him. I, I told him to leave him alone, but, Mr. Dillon, I wish you'd go tell him. All right, Chester. I'll go tell him. If there's anything I hate, it's a bullet. Well, maybe they're just curious about him. He's the first Chinaman I ever knew of in Dodge. Wait till you hear him. There they are. Look. I think you understand one word they're saying. He just backed up there staring at him, holding tight that little old box he's got. Maybe that's what they want. That little box? Or probably just his medicine or something. Oh, he's not an Indian, Chester. No, sir, he ain't. But maybe them Chinese fellas has medicine, too. Look how he's hanging on to it. You don't talk real good, do you, Rat? Somebody must have split his tongue. Oh, no. You know Chinese boys always sound like that. Now, look, good fella. I'm just asking you one more time. What are you doing in Dodge? Oh, me catch a job. Me all the time working hard. Oh, oh job, huh? Well, I sure job. hope you ain't brought your family with you. <laughs> no, no family. One man and one boy. What the same me? Oh, that's one good thing. Why shouldn't a man have a family, Red? Oh, yeah. Hello, oh, Marshal. I said, why shouldn't he have a family? Oh, well, you want a lot of Chinamen running around loose here? What's your name, fella? Chen Lan Wong, me good boy. Catch him place Dodge City all the time, work he hard. Now, Chen, I'm the U.S. Marshal here, and you're welcome in Dodge. You can stay here as long as you like. What are you mixing him this far, You've got no business protecting him, Marsh. He's just dirty foreign, ain't he? Except for the Indians, we're all foreigners here, Braden. Chen, I told you you're welcome in your are, and if either one of these men bother you again, you come and tell me yeah, about now, it. Huh? Now, look, Marshal, you look at that little box he's got. That's probably full of money that he stole something. No, no, no money. Chen, no stealing no oh, money. Oh, who's going to believe you? Get out of here, you two. Huh? Go on, move. Hmm. See about this later. I never heard nothing like it. Law uh, Chen, no like you bring trouble, Marshal. I'll worry about the trouble, Chen. 
Tell me, what kind of work do you do? Well, we catch old place. Very good cook. Uh, uh, cook? Huh? Oh, yes. Uh, well, what kind of cooking do you do? Uh, all kind. Chinese cookie, American cookie, all kind. Say, so you know what, Mr. Dillon? We ought to take him over to Del Monco's. Oh, why? Well, sir, Mr. Green fired the cookie he had there yesterday. Might be he ain't found another one yet. All right, Chester, so you take him over. Uh, Chen, you remember what I said about Rab and Braden? You come tell me if they give you any trouble. Millions know that the best laxative ever made is Haley's M.O. And now you can get it in a wonderful new flavored form. Yes, flavored Haley's M.O. Just imagine, it's a laxative that tastes so good, everyone will be delighted with it, children and adults alike. And remember, ordinary laxatives provide only a certain amount of relief. For irregularity is usually accompanied by acid stomach upset. And ordinary preparations pass right through your stomach without helping one bit. But because Haley's M.O. contains the two most widely approved and time-tested ingredients known, it works first in your stomach to relieve excess acidity, and then where other preparations act to relieve irregularity. By giving you thorough relief, Haley's M.O. makes you feel better, infinitely better than ordinary preparations do. And Haley's M.O. is so gentle, it's recommended even for surgical patients. So buy Haley's M.O. today. Look for the big letters M-O on the package. Get either the plain form or the new flavored Haley's M.O. Mr. Green at Delmonico's took a chance and hired Chen Wong that day. And it turned out he wasn't lying about being a good cook, and neither was he lying about working hard. Mr. Green let him sleep in a storeroom off the kitchen, and there he stayed, out of sight, and... For a while, out of trouble. Oh, hello, Matt. Come in, come in, come in. Hello, Doc. I'll be right with you as soon as I finish with Chen Wong here. No, what's the matter with Chen? There. Lying right there, you see? That's what was the matter with him. <laughs> you lost a tooth, aren't you? <laughs> there you are, Chen. I'm through. See, you better let me take a look at that in the day, dear, huh? Thank you, Doctor. I'll come back. How much do I owe you? Oh, uh, a dollar. Uh, may I pay you next time? See, I won't get my salary from Mr. Green until Saturday. I have no money except for that. Oh, well, sure, sure, Chen, any time. Uh, Chen, the first time I saw you, you were, uh, being a very good Chinese boy all the time, working hard, catch him job, uh, that sort of thing. Isn't that how a Chinaman's supposed to talk, Marshal? Well, I thought it was, too, just now. Oh, some of my countrymen do talk like that, Marshal. English is a very difficult language for us. Oh, well, what about you? I was more fortunate than most. When I first came to America, I worked for a man who was very kind. He taught me, made me study and practice several hours every day. Oh, I see. Well, why were you talking the other way when I first saw you? Experience has taught me that many men resent a Chinaman who does not talk the way they expect him to. I wish to avoid trouble. Chen's on his way to San Francisco, Matt. He's going home as soon as he can save up enough money for his passage. Oh, well, I wish you luck, Chen. Thank you, Marshal. Well, I must get back to work now. Good day, gentlemen. So long, Chen. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's a nice fella. Yeah, he is. I believe him about being broke, too. No, why shouldn't you, Doc? Haven't you heard? I heard what? Uh, Pless Braden and Howard Rabb, they've been saying Chen's got lots of money. Now, they say he keeps it hidden in that little box of his. Oh. Yeah, with that kind of talk going around, Chen's in trouble. There are men besides Braden and Rabb who would murder him for his money and not even think it was a crime. Mm, suppose you're right, Matt. I think I'll catch up with him and have a talk, Doc. I'll uh, see you later. I had that talk with Chen, and I tried to get him to put his box in the bank and then let everybody know that he'd done so, but uh, he said that he wanted the box near him and that he'd keep it hidden in his room. I couldn't argue him out of it, so I knew there'd be trouble. 
Sure enough, a couple of days later it happened, though not the way I'd expected. It was noon, and Chester and I went into Delmonico's for dinner. Say, this place is plumb deserted, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, maybe it's closed. There's Mr. Green. Ah, uh, Green, are you closed today? Uh, hello, Marshal. Chester? Hello. Yeah, I'm closed, Marshal. I got no cook. What? Huh? Chen, he won't cook today. I don't know what's the matter with him. He won't even talk. Oh, where is he? Sitting in his room back there in the floor. Just sitting there, staring at his hand. Well, maybe he's sick. No, he ain't sick. There's something wrong with him. Maybe you can find out what it is, Marshal. He might talk to you. Yeah, sure, I'll try. It's a storeroom right off the kitchen, Marshal. Door's open. Yeah, I'll find it. Chen. Hello, Marshal. Uh, okay, can I come in? I, I'd like to talk to you. Come in. How's your tooth? They giving you any trouble? No. Um, tell me something, Chen. What, Marshal? Do you consider me a friend? I believe you are. Well, good. Then maybe you'll let me help you. In what way? Well, I don't know. You'll have to tell me what's wrong first. It would be difficult for you to understand, Marshal. Well, maybe, but tell me anyway. I'm Chinese, Marshal. I've lived many years in America, but I'm still Chinese. Yeah, go on. Years ago, my country was overrun by a tribe of Tatars called the Manchus. As they took each city, they required the inhabitants to shave around their heads, leaving only a long strand of hair to be braided into a queue. It was a sign of subjugation. But that has been forgotten. And now the queue, or pigtail, as you call it, is of great importance to us. Wait a minute, Chen. I just noticed. Where's yours? To lose the queue is a great disgrace to us, Marshal. Who did it, Chen? Two men. The same, too. You mean Brayden and Rab? They came here last night. They wanted my treasure box. And you wouldn't tell them where it was, so they cut off your pigtails, had it? They took it away with them, Marshal. That makes my disgrace even worse. Chen, will it help any if I get it back for you? If I don't get it back, I must kill those two, no. Marshal. No, don't you go killing anybody. You let me handle this. I'm very sorry, Marshal, for all the trouble. You just wait here, Chen. I'll see what I can do. Well, <laughs> it ain't Marshal Dillon. You gonna buy us a drink, Mark? I thought I told you meant to stay away from Chen Wong. Chen Wong? Now what's he hollering about? His pigtail. He wants it back. I don't know what you're talking about, Marshal. <laughs> yes, you do. Chen's lying to you, Marshal. All them heathen foreigners is lying. Rab. I want that pigtail. Now, where is it? I don't know nothing about it, I tell you. It was not us, honest. Now, Marshal, we did not do it. Maybe I ought to beat the truth out of you. Oh, we're telling you the truth now, Marshal. I don't believe you. You get that pigtail back to Chen or you're in trouble. No, wh wh what do you mean, trouble? You'll find out when it's too late. And there's nothing I can do to stop it. I went back to Chen and I tried to explain things to him. I told him what had happened if he killed anybody, but that didn't bother him. And then I got mad at him for being so stubborn, and I guess he figured I didn't understand at all. So I left him feeling pretty helpless. The next day, he made his first move. 
I found out about it at the Long Branch. Oh, it sure has been a long day, man. I'm worn out, and I got the whole night ahead of me yet. Oh, well, what happened today, Kitty? Oh, well, Sam over there got the bright idea of offering every other drink on the house to any soldier that walked in here. Well, that's one way of keeping your saloon full. Oh, yeah, it sure is. And if this goes on, I might as well move out to Fort Dodge and join the Army. I think it'd be easier. Well, I'm sure they'd be glad to have you, Kitty. Marshal <laughs> Dillon. Yeah, what's on your mind, Reb? That Chinaman, that's what. He's haunting us, me and Braden. And if he don't stop it, I'm going to put a bullet in him. What do you mean he's haunting you? Why, all afternoon he's been following us. Wherever we go, he just stands around staring at us. Why, it, it drives men crazy after a while. Now I'm warning you, Marshal. I'm going to shoot him. Good. Then I can come to you hanging. The rabbit told you before to give Chen back his pigtail. He won't bother you if you do. You still believe him, don't you, Marshal? I believe him. Well, it's a fine thing when a U.S. Marshal takes the word of a stinking dirty little... Shut up! Now you get out of here, Reb. Go on. All right, I'm going. Matt, you better do something about that. They'll kill Chen for sure. Unless he kills them first, Kitty. But I'll tell Chester to keep an eye on him. I'll see you later. Hey, sure. New kind of shoe shine, new do doo new shine all up. A one, a two, a tell them what's new. Kids scuffed up shoes take on a dance and shine. With new shine all up, the liquid kind. Eight. And I tell them it dries to a shine. No puffin' and no buffin', it dries to a shine. That new Shinola, the liquid kind. Next thing you know, the Shinola folks will be offering to put the shoe polish on for you. Their new Shinola liquid wax not only shines itself with no rubbing or brushing, it now has an ingenious new kind of applicator that takes the work out of applying the polish. It's a flexible, flat-shaped applicator that bends to the contour of your shoe and eases right into those hard-to-get-at corners. Spreads the polish so accurately, you don't even have to take your shoes off to shine them. And Liquid Shinola's new wax shine is as special as the applicator. It's the fine leather shine you don't have to brush. Why not turn over your family's shoe-shining chores to new Shinola Liquid Wax? Sorry, Mr. Dillon. Why did you lose them, Chester? Well, see, they was in the Texas Trail having a drink, and I was lost them like you told me. Then Orlo Watts come up and started talking to me, and next I looked, they was gone, all three of them. So I come after you. Uh, we'll find them. Yes, I sure do hope so. Jim was carrying his little box, Mr. Dillon, right under his arm. He was getting... Look over yonder. What's everybody crowding up that alley for? Well, let's go see. All right, let, let, let Mr. Dillon through here, Don. Stand back, everybody. Alvin. Mr. Dillon, it's Chan. Yeah. He's been strangled, Chester. Strangled? Yeah, with his pigtail. I gave it back to him, all right. See, look there. Knife. Got blood all over, too. That's a butcher knife. Chen must have cut one of them. Maybe both. That'll make it easier to track them. Yeah. Now, listen, all you men. I want you to stay here. I don't want anybody following us. You understand? All right, come on, Chester. Just take it easy. It may be waiting for us. Yes, sir. There's something laying over there by that rain barrel. Huh? It's a man. Yeah, it's Howard Rabb, Chester. Looks like Chen cut him up pretty bad. He's dead? Yeah, he's dead. Now let's find Braden. Get on. Hold back, Marshal. You ain't gonna take me. He's out with that shed there, Mr. Jones. Yeah. yeah. You stay here, Chester, and keep Don. I'm going to crawl up there to where I can see him. All right. I'll holler at him a little to keep his tension. All right, good. You ain't got no chance, Braden. Get on back, I tell you. Mighty poor shoot, Braden. 
You must be awful scared. Did Tim get his knife into you, too? You just stand up one time, Chester. I'll be happy to kill you. You drop your gun, Brayden. No! Okay, Chester. Did you kill him? Yeah, I killed him. Well, I guess you had to. There's Chen's treasure box, Chester. Take it up, will you? Mm. There it is. I guess that's what they killed him for. Must be full of money after all. Now, let's take a look. By golly, it is money. Yeah, this much is money. Four dollars. Four dollars? Is that all? That's all. What's that other paper? I don't know. Strike a match, Chester. Hold it over here, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That looks like some kind of a document, don't it? What's it say? I can't see it very well. Hold it closer. Mm -hmm. Some of that. Chen Lan Wong was of invaluable service and intelligence. General McClellan's Army of the Potomac. Peninsula Campaign, March 1862. Mm. Wait a minute. Make another light. Mm. Uh, March 1862, in recognition, uh, something, something, something. Chen Lan Wong is. Hereby granted full citizenship of the United States. Signed Ulysses S. Grant, President. Well, I'll be doggone. Well, it looks like Chen wasn't exactly a foreigner after all, doesn't it? Poor little fella. Chester. Yes, sir. I'm going to take this letter out to Major Honeyman at Fort Dodge. I got an idea he might want to give Chen Wong a military burial. That'd be fine, Mr. John. That'd be just fine. Basil Rathbone, star of stage, screen, and television. Hello there. Nothing's more trouble to an actor than an awful cold. How can you perform? Burning with fever, muscles aching too. I have to get rid of those nasty cold miseries fast. What do you take, Mr. Rathbone? At the first snipple, I take four-way. It's the fastest way to stop cold distress, even a virus cold. Right. Of all leading cold tablets, tests prove four-way is the fastest acting brand. In minutes, four-way's exclusive formula is speeding amazing relief into your bloodstream. In the same time, other brands showed no sign of relief. No other cold tablet, only four-way, starts so fast to relieve all these cold miseries. Relieves aches, pains, headaches. Reduces fever. Calms upset stomach. Overcomes irregularity. Today, get four-way brand cold tablets, fastest way to stop these cold miseries. Only 29 and 49 cents. If a bothersome cough accompanies your cold, get welcome relief with new liquid four-way cough and cold medication. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Ben Wright, Lawrence Dobkin, Barney Phillips, and John Daner. Marley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty.